Now, here comes the music. It's Tuesday night. It's 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable. Tonight I have Mike James. I'm hoping that DJ Fire, Nathan, will show up as well, and Abe, uh, Ellie. Um, we have the uh, search teams out for them uh, tonight, see if they can uh, fumble in here. Um, and I'm scouring Vermont as we speak. Yes, they're they're in the north northern end of uh, let's see here, northern end of the polar ice cap. So yes. they're up there. Beautiful uh, country. For, uh, Absolutely yeah, they're looking beautiful. For, they're looking for the abominable snowman and for Abe Alley and for Nathan. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, unfortunately, I know Nathan had, uh, Mike was telling me that Nathan was, uh, hey, how you doing? Nathan was saying he had some stuff going on. Um, so uh, he had to get some stuff going and done. Um, hopefully, he might be uh, on. He was, he was planning on being on. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll just you leave factually late. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, Abe Alley, I just got a text from him. He's going to try to hop on soon. Give him a few. So, search right. team found Abe Alley. <laughs> and again, guys, if you are watching here on YouTube, you've missed it on Twitch. We're live at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is soon to be. Uh, daylight savings time is going to end soon. Don't forget. So, but it'll, it'll still be eight o'clock at night on Tuesdays on Twitch. You can look on Twitch for TBM Productions underscore Buddy, and you'll find my Twitch pa channel, which I also DJ on there too. So I do go up there and DJ music videos. And then if you're watching this on Twitch, this will be replayed on Monday, the following Monday. On YouTube, and my YouTube channel is TBM Productions DJ One on YouTube. You can follow that and always watch the video then as well. So if you miss something, you can always go back and watch this video. We record it, and it's it's great because I have people such as Mike here, and Mike also has a YouTube channel too. Mike, what's your YouTube channel? You want to tell everyone? It's a uh, DJ Mike James. I do gig logs, product reviews, tech talks, different stuff. It's it's a uh, all family friendly. All about DJing, working this working this life and dealing with equipment and reviewing products and having a good time, basically living the dream. That's half the battle right there. And you know, it's always great to have people come and watch and see what's going on and watch the videos. Uh, it, it's it's one of the things I I want to see more and more people do it. So make sure you tell your friends if you haven't done so already. It's kind of a hidden gem a little bit right now we used to do this on instagram had a lot of people watching now we're we switched so we can have more people and more djs on here and again eventually we're gonna have some vendors on here as well in the sooner probably hopefully next month in the month of november uh get some guys on here from i'm hoping from vibo and also from uh astera dealership so and uh speaking of astera um and I, I showed Mike some video before we got on here, before we got on uh, to, to the video and onto the ch uh, channel here. Um, I showed I, I showed I showed uh, Mike here some video of uh, two weddings I did with the uh, Astera lights, and I've done a total of three uh, uh, weddings with the Astera lights. And I could tell you that um, the lights, if you don't mind putting the money out for them, they do some crazy fun stuff. And I mean crazy in a bad way. I mean crazy in a good way um the app itself is very easy to use you have to get used for stuff is that like any kind of app it's like running show express or any software dmx software and it does a lot more than i'm doing i'm still getting trying to get in the depth of things and getting used to the lights uh one of the lights wasn't wanting to talk to the um system so i had to reset it and uh, i had to cut a shout out for uh mike at Different mic than the mic here. <laughs> uh, Michael over more at... More than uh, one. Yeah, there's more than one. At Astera yes. uh, Rental Chicago in Volo, Illinois. I got to thank him because uh, I give him a call on a Saturday. And when I'm at the wedding, because I'm like, I couldn't remember how to reset the light. He walked me through it very patiently. 
and I cannot thank him enough for that walkthrough. The, the big things I see with the Astera lights is that I'm, I'm scratching the surface still because, again, I'm still new to him, and they have so much more potential, and I'm going to explore that potential. Uh, the wedding coming up this weekend, I'm going to use those lights for that wedding. And I have uh, one other wedding I know as of right now I'm going to use those lights for just because of the way the setup is. Oh, there we go. Abe Alley says I'm coming in in just a minute, guys. So <laughs> cool, Abe. Got you on here. First time chat, too. Love it. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it's, it's very interesting. And, and Mike and I were talking a little before we started the show that the uh, setup stuff like that, Mike was like, I, I want to change my setup a little bit. And he's changed his setup from probably what, a year or two ago to what it is now to make it more refined and I think easier to work with and easier to deal with and easier to do. Mike, you want, you want to tell everyone how you're doing and what you're doing? That's basically from last October to this October. I shot my very first YouTube video last October and I, mean, I did a Sweet 16. That's where I had that huge setup. I mean, triangle trussing, crank stands, movers, Hello. probably... 12, 15 lights. Yeah, I mean, just a, you know, just an insane night because I was working in the nightclub and that was my setup for the nightclub. You know what I mean? And it was and it was great because I never had to move it. <laughs> you know, I mean it was it was awesome. I came into work, I came into work with my backpack and my thing, you know what I mean? And I went to work and I came home. You know, it was great. But then, you know, carrying that around, you know, has gotten to be very taxing, you know, as as I found out this past weekend because I tried to refine my setup down to a more, what I like to call a more elegant setup, where it's not so just raw and and industrial and nightclub. You, you know what I mean? Which is what, what that old trussing is. I mean, I think a lot of people are fading it out. And to be honest, a lot of people aren't really wanting that type of setup anymore. You know, I mean, and, and then, of course, your time and how much, like you said, how much is your time worth? How much is it worth? So Mike, an hour. They're, they're, saying an bit, hour. they're saying there's a bit echo when you're talking. Oh. Do, you, do you also hear the echo on me too, or? No, I don't. Is that better? He turned down the volume, so just tell us if it's better. Or if you're hearing the echo on both, you may want to go out of out of out of the channel, and come back into the channel. Uh, sometimes it does that on Twitch for whatever the reason. If I just turn my volume down on my phone, so maybe no that'll help. So go. Yeah, they're not to say anything yet, so <laughs> we'll continue on. So you, from last October to this October, you're, you're going less industrial looking, less of the trussing, more to the elegant look, more of something yes. that people are appealing, especially uh, with weddings and with special events. You want to have that, that, that look that separates you from your competition. Right. Um, again... I don't, I mean, I don't really go out to too many other people's events. You know what I mean? I know, you know, another DJ, I know a couple other DJs in town, you know, and I know what they take, but like anyone else like that gets, you know, pinned in a Facebook post or something about, you know, uh, so-and-so is looking for a DJ for their wedding or, or what have you. Um, I don't really go see those events, you know, and I, I've seen some people's setups that are just huge, like, they look like racing, you know, like race racing trees, you know what I mean, of, of lighting. And I'm just like, oh, wow. You know, I kind of, I mean, I kind of follow suit with that one because I was, you know, in a commercial place being able to run that industrial look because it was, that's, that's what it is. You know I mean? The, the more industrial looks, almost the cooler it is. But then when you get out and start doing these more elegant events and your and time is of the essence, I mean, like I, like I said, I learned this past weekend, I mean, is it impressive? Does it look amazing? Yeah, it really, it really does. I mean, I, the video is coming out. So as soon as that comes out, check it out on YouTube. You'll see, I mean, what I'm talking about as far as this huge, you know, setup. And then I got up lighting all the way around the rotunda of that round barn, which is super sweet, especially when it gets a little later in the night. But man, I got to say, I, I mean, we, we, you know, the, the last three weddings, I had switched up to the more elegant setup. We were up and down and, 
I mean, the first time I think it took us about an hour and the second time about 45 minutes. And last time we did is about a half hour to set up and a half hour to tear down. Is that's that's just how, much, how much better we're getting at doing it. You know what I mean? Just, and that's awesome when I can be broke down out in 30 minutes and still provide the same quality, you know, the same quality effects, the same quality lighting, the same quality sound, you know, you know what I mean? All, none of those things change. It's just, uh, you know, effort, I, I guess it's effort over cost, over price, over function, you know. And, and we don't it, hurt for two days after the load and the load out. <laughs> and that's one of the things, as I was talking to you before, I have I have a couple of part-time employees, um, two DJs in training. Uh, one is actually another YouTuber and a DJ has worked for me. Uh, he's in college right now. Um, he uh, is an awesome dude. Um and uh, Tommy is, uh, I, I, I love DJing with him. He's a lot of uh, fun. Um, DJ Apocalypse here on YouTube. Uh, he's a great guy. He's away in school right now. Uh, DJ with him a few times, worked with him a few times. He is an awesome, awesome guy. Um, then we have, I have my newest employee, uh, Quinn, which he was, he, he'll make an a appearance on YouTube. And I, of course, I have Vinny, who's been with us now for two years. Both of them are really again really good guys they work really hard uh they're both still in, they're both in high school and uh they work very very well the the thing is that they don't have the dj skills that tommy has because tommy was a dj before he started working with me and he still has his own dj business but it's 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 always great having another person there as a dj and i'm, I'm in training uh vinnie vinnie could do some dj and he can he, i had him do some dancing and stuff like that uh, some dance floor, uh, had Quinn working a little bit more on, uh, this past wedding with the ceremony and stuff like that. So you understand ceremony stuff more. Um, I, there was a first ceremony 18 years I didn't do. And that's one of the things I look at now is I don't want to, when I'm doing bigger steps, I don't want to kill myself, kill Tracy and having an extra hand. That's why I'm charging, you know, a premium price. I want to want to give a good product like you do. I, I see your product. Um, Mike and I have shared pictures back and forth. I love that. I try to share pictures with my friends who are other DJs, uh, and I have a lot of DJ friends. Uh, sure. And you know, I, I I share a lot of pictures. I want to show them, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is not just gloat or anything. But like, hey, this is what I'm doing. What do you guys? I want to get feedback. I want to hear, hey, I, oh, there's a cable over there. Oh, yeah. I want that little nitpicking thing because sometimes their eyes catch things. That I didn't catch. Uh, John C. from Boston, one of my friends, he uh, he uh, sent me a, uh, <laughs> a picture because this last wedding I was against a floating wall, and the floating wall has all those uh, basically partitions or breaks in it. He's like, "There's a lot of linear lines going on," and you're, I'm like, "There's nothing to do. It's a floating wall." Because I had all the lights, all the sticks are all staying straight up. So that gives me a couple ideas to do, and maybe change for next time which is this wedding this weekend, which I'm also going to use these stair lights to change maybe two of them to turn sideways because I will be in front of another floating wall. And the floating walls have those partitions and they have those basically joints between each, each panel. So I think I'm going to do that. So I don't have as many linear lines. Uh, but it's one of the things I look at I always want to improve my craft. And I know Mike and I have bounced ideas. I bounce ideas to other DJs and they bounce their ideas with me. And that's one of the things that we always try to do is improve ourselves. We always try to make sure that we are doing our best and doing everything we possibly can to uh, have the best presentation for our customers. Because again, if we're going to charge a good dollar we want to give that good dollar back to the customer in service and in quality, but also it's a nice look too. We want, don't want to be the, uh, like some DJs, again, you go on YouTube and go on, you can go, you Google it, bad DJ pictures, you know, speakers, not same speakers, uneven stuff all over the place, garbage on the table, beer bottles, whatever. I, I want to have stuff when I take pictures stuff. I want to be as, clean as possible you know sometimes in the beginning i still to clean some stuff up so stuff's not 100 percent. and i see it in the picture i'm like oh i need to fix this i go tie this go fix that and i do afterwards but it, it's always one of those things that we always want to improve ourselves 
Uh, also, everybody, after the stream, check out my D, uh, James' new video. There you go. <laughs> Your uh, your your advocate there right there is. Uh... <laughs> That's my son. It's his birthday today. He just oh, turned happy thirteen. Birthday. Yeah. So when, when is he going to help you on the gigs? When you, we're going to start seeing him in gig logs doing work. He, he's in it. He's in the next one coming up. There you go. It, it posted the Chautauqua book. Oh, did it just post? That's what Ward's Eight doing. Minutes. There you, Ward there just you posted go. my video. So. And also, buddy, your streams uh, ended. I guess. No, it's still going. For me, it's not. For me, it's not. Yeah, loaded. Um, <laughs> loaded yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm green. It says excellent. I'm looking right at it, both sides. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's my birthday boy. Yeah, he's in the Chautauqua. They're they're out there helping. We're setting up the day before actually, on the inside because I had to do the ceremony in the second garden the next morning and then it was set up and do the reception that afternoon, you know? And that's the thing is that, uh, I, I know we were talking about this wedding comment that you did and you were excited about it because you wanted to have change around a few things and make it a nice look. Plus it's also, uh, was a lot of things you're going to do for it too. So that right there, I, I, I can't wait to watch the video. And speaking of video, we have it coming in a Valley. <laughs> there he is, A Valley and A Valley podcast with the screaming chicken and insignia <laughs> with his new logo. <laughs> nice. There you go. It's just backwards. That's all. Yeah, I don't know how to change it. <laughs> you got, you got, you got to mirror it. You got to mirror it in, uh, you got to take it. You take the picture in, um, in photos. And you flip it in photo, and then you add it to the uh, to Zoom. Zoom takes the pictures in reversal. Yeah, something with Zoom sounds complicated. And uh, no, I can. It I is. can. I can change it. Ab, how you doing, man? What's going on, guys? How are you? Uh, hanging in there, keeping busy. Yeah, same here. Uh, yeah. So I. Um, I was watching just a few minutes ago and then of course I just dropped, uh, dropped in, but, um, I had a thing on my door when I got home tonight, my son had a football game. Sorry, we missed you. And it was my uplights. Oh, so I'll get them tomorrow. Uh, your, your RFs. Yeah. The fours. Okay. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it's going to put out a decent amount of light for you, honestly. Yeah, I do too. Um, I'm really anxious to see what I can do with my DMX Go. Um, yeah, I think I'm I think really that's going to be your hoping, best option. Yeah, I'm really hoping I can do the shows with them. So, but hey, I just I just did my like my a big venue, you know, and I and I used my RF ones and my rock wedges to do this huge rotunda old school barn building. The video just went up on YouTube. Yeah, I'll um, check it out. And I'll tell you, you know, the beauty of those RF ones is like even in that huge room, if I just went right in the center of the room and hit the RF, all of them changed. Yeah, that's and then awesome. the rock wedge, I have to go over. I'd be about have to be about ten foot by it. You know what I'm saying? And so I'd have to walk in yeah. there and change it to get the IR to to, to work. Yeah. So that was really convenient on the RF. Yeah, I'll check you know? it out. Um, I. I can't really, you know, I can't wait to do my review video just so I can um, get in depth with them. Uh, I do have a nice wedding on Saturday at a uh, at a really nice barn wedding. Uh, so I'm going to really showcase those on my gig log. Plus, right. I'll add some of that footage in my review video. The re review video might take me, you know, maybe a week to get up, but... Um, I want to show everybody what they look like in action. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Can't wait. And that that's the that's the thing is that, you know, uh, running a system that runs on radio frequency versus a system that runs on IR, infrared, for uplights, it is a big difference, big game changer, because uh, the stairs, they have their own uh, wireless system. And they 
uh, they use the same name as uh, American DJ, but they also call it uh, AirBridge. Uh, and the app works through that through Bluetooth. So it allows you with right. a Bluetooth range, you're connected to it, it'll, it'll talk to it. And it's kind of fun because I was standing in front uh, of this last wedding. The floor was really shallow. Uh, I mean, from the front of my table to the cake table was about four and a half feet. And from the end of the cake table to the first chair was maybe five feet. So you have wow. maybe eight feet, nine feet between my table front end and the first chair. Um, yeah. And that's that's a short, they actually had moved tables off the dance floor for people to, to dance. And I went over and I wanted to, when I was taking pictures, I sat at chairs just for a minute or two to see what the people see eye level. And I took some pictures, you know, standing up and but I was on the app and I was doing stuff, changing the lights, making it do stuff from about 15, 20 feet away. And it was working because there's no one else in the room. That's the other thing is that there's no, right. not, you know, you know, 155 people there with phones and everything else and interfere with Bluetooth. So in theory, you get a lot of great distance. It, it, it really boils down to when people are there, stuff is going on, how much interference you get, how far you can get. But those RF systems, um, I feel are mar much more superior than the IR systems because you have, yeah, you know, more infinite distance depending on frequencies and so forth, so on, than you do with IR, which you got to get kind of close. You get that 10 foot, like Mike, you were saying, get above with the remote control, kind of get the right angle and, and point right to it and, and make sure it hits that sensor. Now, again, there's, there's good and bad on both sides. The nice side is, with the IR remotes, you don't have to worry about interference, radio frequencies, because people are using their Bluetooths or headsets, the photographer, so forth, so on. You don't have to worry about that. But downside is that, yeah, you got to get close to it. Uh, I, I did, I will tell you this. Um, this is going back probably about eight or nine years ago. Uh, we we're doing a wedding at a venue and they have, they do their own uplighting. The photographer sets up their um, their post. So I'm using this. They set their post up or over here, and then on the wall, say back here, are all the up lights. So they put the post next to me, so it's up here. They have their uh, light up here on top to flash out. You know, so it's you know, you know how these photographers a lot of times will stick it their post next to you, but their post way up high, and the light will be on top, and they'll take pictures with it, and so forth, and so on. Well. He was doing it, and every time he took a picture, the lights around the room would change <laughs> because the up lights and his uh, light same frequency. and transmit yeah, same frequency, same yeah. two point four gigahertz. Yeah. So every single time he took a picture, the lights would do weird things. It would flash and change color. Then you have some lights this color, and some lights that color. And Tracy uh, went over and grabbed hold of the manager. Um, of the facility said, hey, um, this is what's going on with your lights. Uh, the photographer has probably the same frequency you're on, and every time he takes a picture, the lights change. So they came in, they talked, and the photographer, it was easier for the photographer to change colors, but, I mean, change uh, frequency, so he changed frequencies real quick on his equipment, but they had to get the hold of their guy who does uh, lighting, and he had come in and changed the lights back to the color they wanted. Versus you had, I, I think it was like four or five different colors and they were flashing and doing all these crazy things. So again, there's pros and cons to every technology. There's no perfect technology, but I feel right. that having, striking the blend between a couple different technologies, you actually work out better. And having that with the RF1s do what they do and then having the, you know, the, the wedges do what they do and having it two separate things. I would keep the wedges close by that way. I can walk up to it, hit the IR remote, or have someone touch with the IR remote, and then have the RF ones further away and have one close by because they all talk to each other, and that way they're within range of the uh, IR uh, of the RF remote. Hit the RF remote, hit the button for that, and let it do its job. Yeah. Normally, I would have done that, buddy, but the size of the room, I had. To, oh, I, I mean, did, I put. Yeah. You, you, I put you, that rock where it just. Close as I could get it to me, really, you know, without putting it on stage with me, without would have messed the balance up of the lights, you know. Yeah. Right. Um, I think I think it was Nathan showed me that room before you guys. He was saying 
he was talking about it and he's like you gotta see this place and he uh he showed me that place and that room it's huge the echo in there was sick man it was just crazy like it was crazy it was a it was an acoustic nightmare i'll just say that much you know from the Sometimes stage, I could hear everything slap the wall and slap back oh, at me. But standing out there, you never heard any of that. Like so if you're in the middle of the dance floor, it sounded awesome. But if you were to yeah. the right of the speakers or the left of the speakers, it just sounded like mumbo jumbo, I guess. It's, yeah. that's what they it's, set up it's all is all those things, horrible things that us as DJs and people who do sound actually hate. Uh, and if I remember correctly, the, the room is kind of is it kind of like a half circle or three quarter circle? It's a complete round building, but they've got the stage like cutting off like a sixth of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so you've got this. You have, huge... you have, yeah, you have almost a complete circle, but you, you basically usable space is like, you know, three quarters or a half, wherever it is. Of, it's more than circle. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more, it's got to be like two thirds or something. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a large amount and you get this little wedge taken out for the stage and for backstage and so forth. But yeah, that that's high slice. Yeah. You know those those, and I'm sure it is a historic building, right? It was built like 1920s, 1930s. Hunter, so Hunter plus your old building. You gotta remember back in let's say 1920s, 30s, 40s, even the 50s, you did not have a lot of reinforcement in sound, and reinforcement depending on you know who owned it, how much money they had, could they afford to have a sound system. You know, there's a lot of things there. It's why they built buildings like that. That's why I like a lot of your old churches, how they are acoustically. Uh, a father, reverend, rabbi, whomever can stand up there and talk, and everybody can hear it because it acts like an echo, echo chamber. It amplifies your voice. And they can talk nice and, and calmly. And everybody in the church, including the people in the back of the pews, can hear it because it reflects. Now, when you go in there, like I, I'm doing in two weeks of wedding up in Wisconsin, at an old church, I'm worried about the echo because where I'm facing and what they're what so far what I saw on the uh, the, the floor plan, I, I've got a feeling I'm gonna be fighting echo all night long. And if that's the case, it's gonna be a it's, it's gonna be a hard one. But I'll try my best. You know, so all I can do is try and see what happens. Yeah, well, that's what I did. I mean, like I said, on the dance floor. And even I'm talking and now if you went outside, you know, like it was about I don't know, it was about 20, 25 yards to the restrooms or whatever, you know what I mean? Outside the building. And over there it sounded great. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's <laughs> it's all pooping yeah. out of that, it's all pooping out of that <laughs> that that barn door. You know what I'm saying? Just shotgun like that whole place is your speaker cabinet at that point, you know. And it sounded fantastic. I mean, not that it didn't, but you could still hear that slap echo even outside, you know. You guys it have gigs this weekend? Gig. Huh? Do you guys have any gigs of, this weekend coming up? I got to I got to do a doubleheader at EIU for the volleyball game this weekend and then I got to work uh early cuz it's homecoming here for the university. So I'll be at the bar 11 to 5 on Saturday. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm, I'll be then I think the games are going to start at 11 on Friday. So I got two games back to back on Friday and then 11 o'clock at the bar for the homecoming parade. How about you, How about you Abe? You got a gig this weekend, Abe? I do. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, a wedding on Saturday. Uh, it's going to be really good. I'm going to have my buddy Brandon with me, I think. He's nice. uh, he's anxious to see my up lights. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and he's never been out to that venue. Um, so it's really nice out there, but. Is it your favorite I mean, venue in the whole wide world? But the, you hate the owners. <laughs> you know, you know what though? I, <laughs> I sent, I sent Mike and Nathan the, the link last week. Yeah. Hopefully you checked that video out, Mike. Um, but I'm actually going back there next September. Oh, really? But there's a catch. 
different different owners. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So initially when they contacted me a couple weeks ago, I was like, uh, who's the owners? And I found out this new owners. So I'm okay. Yeah, he should be all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it was bad last time. That, yeah, that's... That, that video, again, I felt I felt bad for you, bro. I felt bad for you. And Well, I had, I had to pull over and record myself because I had to vent. I was like, I've never been that mad before. I don't blame you. I saw it's a good video. You recorded and yeah, I, I can see why you were frustrated, to say the least. And um, here, here's a funny thing: the, the wedding I've come up this weekend. It's a place I've Crazy. gone to plenty of times. I called the facility up today. I talked to one of the facility managers, and uh, I just was <laughs> verifying everything that you know, nothing's changed for policy. I can come in the time sure. I need to come in at. I'm just doing a reception only, no wedding ceremony. Um, I do have. The bride's cousin is playing an accordion for cocktail hour. And then the groom's father and the the cousin are going to do a couple songs. And the groom's father is going to do a solo on saxophone. So he's, oh, he's, nice. he's got saxophone. He's going to do two or three songs. And then um, uh, the cousin's going to do open a dance floor up with a couple songs. And then I come in with... Uh, with music and do the re music rest of the night. So it, it's, it's one of the things that uh, I wanted to make sure, I, you know, we're there plenty of time. Um, so I had to verify time. So I was talking to the, the manager there. <laughs> I was telling them that, you know, they're, they're pretty easy as far as, you know, they're the very simple policies and procedures. I know where everything's at. I know what I need to do to bring in. Uh, I, they, I'm going to be in front of a floating wall. It's about 45 feet to an extension uh, to an outlet. So I got to bring a couple of 50 foot extension cords, which I have in my van. Just got to bring the spools in with me. I know sure. that before even walking in the door, what we needed to have. And I was, I was talking to him and said, Hey, yeah, at least you're not making me jump through a bunch of hoops. Like some places do. He goes, well, yeah, we got a new policy. As of today, you got to carry all your equipment in on your back backwards through <laughs> through the entrance i'm like oh man like no that's it sorry you got to tell the bring i'm not coming <laughs> here's <last. Yeah>. but <laughs> i've been <laughs> having that kind of rapport i feel it's very important with facilities oh sure and having that little little bit of humor and it, that's what it was humor joke and it's it, it having that kind of reputation of when you go to places they're like oh yeah hey it's it's buddy and tracy from tbm coming in we know they're right. going to take care of the client. We know we want to babysit them. They're not going to ask for extension cords. They're not going to ask for stuff. Uh, this venue also is a venue that uh, years ago we came into, and I was talking to um, one of the owners, and um, when I was talking to him, just asked a couple of quick questions about setup and stuff, um, and Trace was going to talk to him about timelines. Uh, <laughs> this other guy comes walking up, and all he has – I have my tablet here, but all he has is his laptop with him, and that's it. it laptop and, po and power source and, you know, MacBook and power, and he goes, where do I plug in? And the guy goes, well, you bring your equipment in through there's a door in the back, bring the equipment through the back. No, no, I'm like, like, where do I plug in? He goes, yeah, here, I'm the he DJ. He thought they had it set up. Yeah. Like, no, well, you got to have your own stuff, you know? <laughs> the guy had nothing. The guy had his oh, that's it. He's a he's a club DJ. The people saw him at a DJ in that club. They loved him. Yeah. So guess what? They had nothing. Yeah. And again, sometimes no. uh I get again, there's a lot of different guys out there who DJ and stuff like that. But if people, customers need to ask questions, you know, are you a mobile DJ or are you only, you know, a resident DJ at a club or or right. you know, at a bar or whatever? And all you do is go there and play with a laptop, you don't have equipment. And again, for that that person, that DJ, uh, to me, it's also bad too because they didn't think that they're going to a place that's a, a wedding venue. They're gonna have speakers in the ceiling, you know, basically, you know, some right. some speakers way up there, you know, 20, 30 feet in the air. They're designed for background music. You're not gonna have a dance floor with that. Uh, there's a few venues that have sound systems. If you was you know like you know roll the dice and got one of those few that have their own sound system. 
okay, you, you might have gotten away with it. Of course, some of those places are sound system's not great, but it, one of the things you should always go into and make phone calls and talk to facility managers. Always talk to yeah, someone. Yeah, you just have to do your research on things. Well, you yeah. just Even as a, just a person, like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's common sense. I mean, it just is. I was a club DJ, man, and I just used to go and roll in with my laptop, but all the equipment was mine. <laughs> right, yeah. Club, I'm, I've only plugged in one time. There was one time where I get to just use my controller, laptop, and that was it. One right. Time I've never, in I've 17 never, years. I've never been in that situation. Yeah, I've never plugged in someplace. Yep. Yeah. One time. And it was good. It was all it was all Mackie stuff in this club that I did like five years ago. Um, it was great. There was subs, there was everything. And uh they had lights. Nice controller, laptop. Right in. Took me two minutes. But again, you, you, never, knew, yeah. you knew what you needed to do beforehand because you did you I did place, right. ask questions, found out. This I guy just, just you know, he didn't look before he leaves. Automatically had something. Yeah, he he Jeez. didn't he didn't look before he leaped. And you know, it, it's it's I see that with some people, uh, other DJs. There there's guys on YouTube. There's guys you know, non YouTube that do stuff like that. And it's like you sit there and scratch your head, go, why? What? Why? Yeah. So why, I got why? a question you for know. you guys. Go ahead. Um, so maybe you guys can ask a same type of a question after I ask my question, just when you arrive to a venue and you find out where you're going to set it up and there's a table provided for you. Take it. You do. How about you? Buddy? No, no, no. Move it. I tell him to move it. I move it. I use yeah, my yeah. own. I've got my own booth, man. I don't. Yep. What about you, buddy? Uh, depending what package the customer picks. Um, if they pick a, uh, the basic packages, I don't bring my booth in. So I use, yeah. you know, the table provided. You know, I have my own uh, skirting. If uh, they don't have table skirts, I have my own yeah. table skirt. I have my own tablecloths. I have all that stuff myself. So I, I can just... dress the table myself. But it, it goes well, boils down to what package you have. Even with my booth, even with my booth, I still take the table and I'll turn the table sideways so it's next to me on one side. I got you. Yeah, I'm so I can you use that. that for staging, for for putting on my Laptop, glass, my, my or water. Whatever, yeah, we can put stuff underneath it, store stuff, hide things. Yep. So I still use that table. I move it, but if the facility, if the customer picked a package for me that I'm not using my booth, I'm not using video, I'm not using white setup, that you're doing certain things. Yep. They're pick, they pick a basic package. There's a six foot and eight foot table. I will use that table and be like, okay, fine, great. Boom. Just make sure it's dressed nicely. So, you know, cables are hidden. It looks nice. I don't have to worry about, oh man, you know, it, it looks horrible. It, it's one of the things that I always, I try to work with what's there, try to work smarter and harder. But if, again, if you are feel it's best for you to use your booth every time, you know, again, every does things differently. Everything's look. Everything yeah, looks I just, differently. Uh, there's nothing against it. Like usually, there's a, a a cloth, you know, that goes all the way down to the floor. It's nice. It's you know, it's put together nice. But usually, it's like an eight foot table. I, I don't need that much space for one. If I, if I put my controller on there with my laptop on my controller. And that's all that's there. It kind of looks silly. You need an end table, you know. You know, you yeah, you know, you know four footer, right? Those little but, podium stands that that are really cool, you know. Yeah, those are cool too. I just um, I never use them anymore. I I have before, but um, I just yeah, it, it would save time for me, but I don't know. I just I don't like doing it. So I forgot to ask you guys. See, for, see for me, you know, eight foot table, put the controller down. You have, you know, uh, you know, hand sanitizer. I have, you know, I don't have the control all the way on the edge. I haven't moved over because I have my mouse pad there. I have my mouse. I used I have, your microphone spray the other day. 
There you go. Microphone. I had that. I have uh, yeah. alcohol wipes, wiped out microphones. I have your hand sanitizer. I have stuff there. I want room for a drink. I have my paperwork out. So my paperwork's there. So I can open it up and look at it. It also has room for Tracy when she comes down, sits down for a minute or two, gives her a little work area. So it's it's one of the things also you got to remember, I'm more than we're more than one pit person. So sure. we're at least yeah. two. So if you had always had some with you, having the extra space and the table is nice because it gives them a work area. And yeah. they, they can kind of put their drink down. You know, they can they can work in the area and be organized so that way you're ready for you know for the event. Um, All right, here's another one. Here's another one for you. Go ahead. And all the everybody that's watching the the live stream and whatnot, or watching the the replay of the video, if you're a DJ, say you were booked for six hours, and five hours goes by, and there's four people left in the dance hall. Do you? get done early and say, Hey, nobody else is here. I'm not going to waste my time. There's option number one, option number two, uh, somebody, not the bride or groom or anyone from the family, but just a random, random person that's still at the you know reception or whatever comes up and says, how long are you staying? Oh, you get an hour left. Uh, there's only like five of us here. You can go. Do you leave? Or do you stay automatically to the time you agree to? For me, it is up to the bride and groom. They're the ones in ultimate control. Okay, what uh, if they, they left? What, what, if, they me? what yeah. if they're gone? If they're gone and there's only a few people there, then you know you need to look at who is left there. Who is the hierarchy there? Five people. Who who's the hierarchy? You know, is, is are they related uh, they, to the bride? They're just, they're just guests. They're just guests. Five people. Yeah. Five. Are they dancing or are they sitting around? Um, uh, half and half. I would ask <laughs> you guys want to go on or you guys I'm, want an early. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just tell, I'm just giving you a scenario because this happened a thousand different ways for me. Oh yeah. But, uh, they, what, I mean, I, I'm like, there to, I'm there to the time I'm contracted to, unless they cut me loose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. If, so, yeah. if the bride and groom have left and they're not returning, the people that booked me left and they're not returning, and we've got four or five people out there, and I say, hey man, just go and get out of here. I'm gone. Dude. Yeah. So. Last I mean, Saturday, more than likely, I'm still breaking down anyway, so it's probably it's, it'll be six before right. I'm out of there anyhow. You know what I mean? Right. So last Saturday, I had a gig 20 minutes away. I sent I sent Buddy some video, um, or pictures or whatever. Pictures. And I, we always go back and forth on our gig. Yeah, Mike and I do. I do it a bunch of people. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to start sending you guys, uh, Mike and Nate and everybody, Natty Ice, sending some Natty <laughs> oh, Ice yeah. to Natty Ice. Oh yeah, that's um, hilarious. But ceremony was at one thirty, and ending everything at seven p.m. How awesome wow. is that? Well, yeah. So at six o'clock, my bride and groom left. They didn't say anything to nobody. They left because they had to go to Boston to to get on a flight the next morning. And, which okay. I did too. I, I was going to the Patriots game the next morning. I got up at four the next morning and took my son down there. We uh we got to see the Pats kick some real butt. Oh, Sunday. you don't see anything now. Zoom does not like the Pats. Cup, no, that's all right. Cup, a couple does of anybody? weeks, the Chicago Bears are gonna get it. <laughs> How about how about my Giants, man? So, anyways, hold on. I will get to that. <laughs> Giants are doing good, though. Giants are doing good. Um, Dable has changed them. So, <clears throat> six o'clock, my bride and groom left. Didn't tell nobody. There was about fifteen people left, and five were dancing. The other ten were just sitting there. I kept plugging the bar, promoting the bar because I know the venue likes to make 
money off the alcohol. So I do that. That's my that's part of my job. I want to help the venue. Okay. At so, a wedding reception? Wedding reception, yeah. Do you do that at a wedding reception? What? You plug the bar? No, I plug like the do, bar. I do it when I, you know what I'm saying, when I work the bar, you know what I mean, when I'm working at the Yeah, at the no, club. no, no, I, I do it because I, I don't know, I just want to make them more money. I don't know. It's just a little thing I like to do. Weird. Um, All right. All right. It, I don't know. It's just how I do it. Um, well, see, uh, my so, view is like I'm there for the wedding reception. I'm not there to plug the venue. I don't work for the venue. I work for the bride and groom. You know, okay. it's like plugging. It's kind of like plugging myself at a you know at a wedding reception. I'll, I'll plug myself at the bar all day long. You know, check out my Facebook page. Blah 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 blah. But I won't. I don't do that stuff at wedding receptions. You know what I mean? Just yeah. because. I don't know. It I just I like from, to it. Do it. To me, it takes away from why we're there, which is celebrating the the marriage of these people, and not plugging. You know what I mean? That's just me, but it's cool. You know what I mean? Like you do what you do. I mean, I, I get it. Yeah, I, work I mean, I don't know. I I just like to um to help the venue out. I guess I don't know, but so there was say five people dancing and ten people just sitting there, and to me, I, I'm staying there until seven o'clock because. It's an early night. I'm. That's not gonna kill me. No. You know? So 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 I had, I had a couple come up to me and said, uh, "Hey, you're not gonna leave, are you?" I said, "No. Why? Well, because there's not many of us here." I said, "I'm here until seven, okay?" Right. So, I stayed until seven, no problem, right? So, at the end of the night, I'm tearing down. And the same couple comes up to me again. You did a great job. We we thank you so much for staying. And of course I was going to stay, you know. Well, they tipped me because I actually stayed because they went to a wedding two weeks ago that the DJ left two and a half hours early. Like they cut him loose or he just left? No, he left. Oh. He left because even... because nobody was dancing and there was and and so I asked how many people were there. She said forty. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a lot. So you you can't do that. No. Um. No. So, uh, what I'm getting at is, if it was at like twelve midnight and there was like five or ten people there and they weren't doing anything and I was supposed to be there until one. I probably would have left. Right. Depending, you know, depending on what's going on. Uh at six, seven o'clock at, at night, I'm gonna just gonna stay. I'll stay. You know, I was only twenty minutes from my house. So when you put it that way and they're like, Oh, you're not leaving, are you? Well, of course I would have stayed. You know what I'm saying? Even I would have yeah. stayed if someone but if you're like they're cutting me loose, like, hey man, nobody's doing stuff here. Get, yeah, go ahead and break down and get out of here. You know what I mean? You got an hour left and they're gone. Right. And so. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about putting in my contracts that if something like that happens during the reception, like later on, that there has to be some justification for me to stay. I'm thinking about putting something in my contracts. Because I would I, I would say it's probably it would be best if you put in there that um if the DJ if the DJ or any uh, personnel of a valley you know your DJ service uh, any personnel of your DJ service or yourself see that there are most most of the guests have left and, and nothing's going are, on are, yeah there's nothing going on the guests who are there are not dancing and it's within the last hour of there and the bride and groom are not right. on premise. And there's no one else you can ask. Uh, it's just yeah. up to the discretion of you as the DJ or the employee of your business to decide <laughs> to stay or not to stay. Uh, but you still are fulfilling the requirements of the contract. Right. And right. that's that's one of the things. It's it's a hard area because you don't want to not fulfill your contract and give the customers a reason why they want right. to back, ask for money back or give you a bad review saying that, Hey, uh, DJ Mike James uh, left early because the fact that you know uh, we had four or five people here and they weren't dancing, and we left already, and we expected him to play to midnight. He only played till eleven o'clock, and he started packing up. Well, 
if you have that in writing beforehand and you, you call out to the couple, right. hey, if you guys are right. leaving early, I'll see how it goes. If the, the, if the party is dying, I may end it early. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you who really needs to be out front. here for this conversation is is Nathan because he had that happen. He, I guess he did a, he did a, a you know, an event is somewhere out in the country with people that he knew or what have you. And then they all left and he thought they were, you know, they were gone for good. So he broke down and left. Well, they all came back. <laughs> oh my God. And he, wasn't, and he wasn't there. So, you know, oh, yeah, no. man, I mean, like I said, somebody that's actually dealt with this, you know what I mean? He's not on tonight, but I'm just saying like, yeah, he that's... Had the great perspective, you know, that that's that's bad communication from the the people who are having the event, be it a couple yeah, or be a, a birthday boy or birthday girl or whoever. I'm, I'm pretty but sure I you got will, threatened with litigation on that one, you know. So I, I don't know. I will man. say that when the bride and groom do leave, it, it kills my mojo. Right. It, I, I mean, not all the way, but it's like, come on, like I, I'm here for you guys, you know, yeah. and especially if. If they don't tell you, they just split. So you're talking to somebody and be like, hey, where's David and Teresa? Oh, they left. They're done. They're in a debt now over Japan. Yeah. Teresa's puking. They're done. Like, <laughs> okay. No, it's, it's happened before. I hate it. Oh, I've, I mean, it I've happens. Been, oh, DJ Fire's coming and speaking everything. It's great. There he is. There he is. Was he watching? Daddy Ice, baby. He's coming in. He's coming for a, he's coming part of the clamp cruise. Me on it for a few minutes. Daddy Ice, baby. Woo! Daddy Ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, you guys. I got some Natty Ice right here. Nathan, you're coming in the last few minutes of the show. I've been watching the entire show, but I have another YouTuber. I've actually been working on a video for him. So thank you yeah. for that, by the way. I, I saw that that video went up. Uh, the video had processed for two hours and twenty eight minutes. I don't. Oh. YouTube processing is taking forever. Slow. Yeah. Very slow. Since, since you're on, these guys are talking about you know wedding parties leaving and then. You know, I, I heard the little comments. Okay, That's why okay. I come on here because I heard what you said. <laughs> I, I, I was just saying, I, I, you know, I don't want to tell you know your stories for you, so I'm glad you come on so you could tell them. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you told that story because I probably wouldn't have came on. But <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that just totally stinks mm, that the whole entire party left, and here you are. You know, and that's not bad. Left I'm, yourself, and... I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out what event that was. I was like, did yeah. why? I just... I don't it was remember her, uh, Chaz's brother or sister or whatever. Remember? Oh, okay, that wasn't in the country. That was here in town. Oh, well, I would... they didn't. They they didn't come back. Like, I wasn't the, okay. So my friend Zach has an entertainment company. He does tables, chairs. Uh, he has inflatables, all that stuff. And um, so he has, you know, supplied all the tables, all the chairs, you know, all the decorations. He was tearing down too. He had actually, he's like, you know, I'm pulling power cords, I'm tearing stuff down. He was tearing, he put a big tent up. Not, might have known it was about a 89, 90 degree day that day. So it was hot as heck. He had big fans out there, wasn't helping. Everybody left, but like the bride and groom and the groom and them were just kind of chilling in the church, you know, talking. And Zach come out there and started. He's like, I guess you can tear down, you know, but I don't think they're going to. And then they all took, like the bride and groom got in the car and took off. And like we're gonna go around town honking, but didn't even wait for the people to go. Like all it was was like four people, and it was all family. Everybody else left because they were tired of being in the heat. Mind their wedding ceremony took place at noon. Oh wow! Yeah. Really? So by two o'clock, three o'clock, you know, and dinner wasn't delivered until like I don't know five. But everyone was just like. Ah, Word, you know, I kept telling them, I was like, y'all need to push your wedding back to like 2.33. Noon is too early. And you're yes. going to have people standing around waiting, going, you know, what? Well, well, this is done. I'm going to go <laughs> home and call me when dinner's here. You know, I'm going to go home and take a nap, you know. But, um, yeah, it's, I mean, they wasn't mad at me or anything. They were, you know, they were kind of like, you know. So they did come back? I don't know. They, they, they kind of came back, but they didn't exactly like. 
get like mad like they were in the church and i was tearing down they joined in and started helping clean up help them take the tent down you know picking up food picking up trash it was at a church so the church also had you know um you know something going on with a, their zach also does puppets ministry so they had a puppet show there the next morning so they were kind of wanting to get tore down so they could get that all set up i was only booked until eight so i mean i think by seven is when i started tearing down so it was only an hour oh, and then by the yeah. you know yeah that's not bad but you know they they said you know we're not mad you know they didn't they didn't you know care a whole lot i did give them some money back you know i, I was nice enough and gave them some money back and and, uh, you know, not a big deal, but, uh, you guys have been talking about, you know, Abe, you were talking about, uh, your wedding there. I was listening to that while I was doing some editing. Um, how, how are your guys is like me and Mike's been talking about this weddings. When I remember going to a wedding, when I was a kid, people stayed out until, you know, right until the, the venue closed. Now it's like seven o'clock. Everyone's out the door. You know, they're like, ah, we're done, you know, and that's kind of what's going on with the wedding I have at the end of the month. They're wanting to get through everything so that they can go to the bar because they don't want to pay for, you know, everybody's alcohol. They don't want to have alcohol there. And I'm like, you really think everyone's going to go with you to the bar? Like, there's not really any good bars in this town. Um, you know, if you want to go to the bar, just go to the courthouse and get married and go to the bar, you know? Right. But. Well, I have I a celebration. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, you know, people leave early, but like the last, the last wedding, uh, I just had this past weekend. I had still had like 30 people, several 155. I still had like 30 people at the end. Um, and I showed Mike the video of that one. And then the wedding I had, uh, a couple ways ago, that was, that was 225 people. I still had like around 80 people at the end singing dance with the bride and groom. So. It all boils down to the crowd, you know. Some and I've had a, a wedding two weddings ago that we ended a little earlier because of the shuttles. And every stayed at the hotel, and every you know the shuttles only come so many times. And you know the bride and groom are tired; they want to get out of there, so they, they ended a half hour early because they want to get on the shuttle and get back to the hotel and just relax. Because half the times when people are tired. Um, Abe, what do you think? Well, up here in Maine. Us Mainers up here, Mainers, <laughs> we don't pronounce our R's up here. So, m not Mainers, it's Mainers. So, we like to drink up here, and or people do. I I don't. I used to when I was young. But what I'm seeing this year, and it, it's been kind of like this for the last couple of years, the wedding receptions don't go as late as they used to 10 years ago. And I, I don't, I'm not sure why I, I don't, I, I don't mind it. I, I don't mind it at all. As far as being, you know, uh, I'm getting done by at the latest 10 o'clock. Most of the time, that's perfect. They're not, as, they're not as crazy and wild as they used to be either. You know, it's, it's hard to get people. It's like, some people want to talk and stand around and other people's will dance. That's another thing. It's hard to get people to dance. Like I did my, I can understand. I did my 15 uh, year Especially class in two daylight two weeks ago. Yes. And every, I mean, I understand we, a lot of people in the afternoon there for a while. They were wanting to chat and talk. You know, I, I understand that, but we're here to have fun. You can chat and talk while you're dancing. You know, I, I, yeah. think, I, I think COVID a lot of people haven't seen each other in a while and that that's part of problems, but. We need to start wrapping this up because uh, we need to get out of here. It's already, already been an hour, and, and Nathan, you came in fashionably late right at the end. <laughs> well, I was working for a big YouTuber doing some stuff for him, so I yeah, he's wanted to get a YouTuber. video out tomorrow, so I had to finish it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, Mike's, Mike's video, like I said, I, I posted it at like 5 o'clock. And then went, I got kind of got a little tired. So I went and took a power nap and come back and it was still processing. I was like, holy cow, it's been like two hours. <laughs> so right after the stream started, it finally said, uh, you know, well, everything's good. You can publish. So, well, I got to thank you guys all for coming in here tonight. A Bally, A Bally podcast on YouTube. And also on, uh, he does some uh, podcasting out there. So you can check him out for his podcasts. Uh, Mike James on YouTube does reviews. 
Tech Talk, as well as Giglogs. And of course, DJ Fire, he has three channels, including a Nathan 343 channel and a DJ Fire channel, and also his channel for his uh, uh, lawn care services and snow removal services. So, yep, check them out. So you make sure you look at all of them all on in social media, including Instagram. Uh, follow us all. Other than that, guys, again, if you have not done so already, follow us here on Twitch. If you haven't followed us here on Twitch, make sure you go over to YouTube and you can watch this video the following Monday. If you're on Monday watching this, should have been here live on Tuesday. Other than that, guys, you guys have a good night. Enjoy yourself. Be safe, guys. Thank you all. Thanks for having me.